The Chicago White Sox are in free fall. They were swept by the Cleveland Guardians and now by the Minnesota Twins during this past road trip. Is it simply bad April baseball, nothing to worry about, or is it just plain bad baseball? Uh, also, more injuries to discuss, but all hope is not completely lost. Uh, there are some silver linings to discuss. You are locked on White Sox, your daily Chicago White Sox podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Sox fans, welcome to Lockdown White Sox. Thank you for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen each and every day. We're free and available on all platforms. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Lockdown Sox. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just search Lockdown White Sox. Hey, today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. Hey, I'm your host, Nick Murawski, a lifelong diehard Chicago White Sox fan, recording this podcast just blocks from the ballpark in beautiful Bridgeport. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GGTB. Really appreciate you letting me steal some of your time to talk White Sox. Lockdown White Sox is part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, Want to talk about Kopech and why we should focus on his recent success. Also, why is Aloy's latest injury so heartbreaking? And speaking of heartbreaking, uh, let's talk about Sunday's series finale in Minnesota and where this Sox team is at the Chicago White Sox are six and nine. Uh, they've lost uh, many, many games in a row. It uh, it's at seven right now. They are tied for third in the AL Central. Uh, how are you feeling, Sox fans? Um, I uh, I really appreciate you tuning in. Uh, hopefully, there's this is a little bit of Sox therapy. Um, misery loves com- uh, company. Um, is this just bad April baseball in your mind? Uh, just the result of a bunch of injuries? Or is this a very bad baseball team in April? Is this just bad, bad baseball? Is it a combination of many different things? Uh, There's a difference. Um, You know, I'm sorry, but I can't subscribe to the fact that, well, this is what happens when you have a short spring training and, um, you know, it's, it's bound to happen. This is just April. There is too much talent and veteran presence on this ball club to dismiss it simply as, well, that's what happens in April. This Chicago White Sox team is playing bad baseball on multiple different levels. Uh, We saw it on display uh, this past weekend. Uh, They carried a lot of bad habits with them from Cleveland to Minnesota. Um, It was an upsetting weekend. It's confusing. It's troublesome. Lots of Sox fans simply just shaking their heads in disbelief. Uh, Luis Robert did not play in this series. Hopefully, we get more information uh, on that injury. uh, The rumor is that he might be back uh, in the Kansas City series. Um, So, I mean, offense, defense, uh, bullpen now, uh, it was a very bad a Sunday game. The Sox lost to the Twins six to three. Liam Hendricks gave up a walk off to Buxton, who had a really good game and a great series. He had two home runs uh, in the game. Why pitching to Bus- Buxton? I, I have no idea. Uh, it almost looked like Liam Hendricks tweaked something uh, on one of his pitches there. Uh, as in, he was in relief. Um, it, it was a, a, a horrible ending. Uh, to a very bad uh, road trip. Um, when you're not scoring runs, you know, everything has to be perfect. You cannot afford to throw the ball away on a pickoff move or, or cause an error or not cover a base or have a base running uh, gaff. Um, you have to have quality at bats. You've got to get guys over. You've got to manufacture runs. Uh, it, it's tough to come by. Every little mistake gets magnified. And these fundamentals uh, during this 
during this seven game losing streak, it, you just you don't know what to say uh, to other Sox fans. And I don't know, you know, what these players what what can these players say except for, well, it's just time, you know, to move on. Um, there's some silver linings. We're going to get to the Kopech stuff later in this episode. Giolito pitched on Sunday uh, and it was a sight for sore eyes. He gave you four innings, four hits, one earned run three walks, nine strikeouts. He's got his ERA at 1.13. He threw 76 p- pitches and it looked like he was, uh, you know, on the shelf for a-, a couple weeks, which he has been. He labored, got out of some very tense moments. Uh, it was not easy, but he battled. He made quality pitches when he needed to. I mean, Giolito had to pitch and the point was made uh, during the telecast by Steve Stone Jason Benetti brought up the point to Stone, like, what does it matter uh, if Giolito has to get out of tense situations? How does that help him? And essentially what Steve Stone said was Giolito has to pitch. He has to make smart pitches. He has to, you know, overcome uh, some of these issues. It's not always going to be easy. Folks, when you uh, go on the mound, I mean, it's very rare when you have 100% of your stuff working all of the time. So you've got to learn to, to deal with, you know, what you're given on that day. And uh, th- th- I thought it was a great performance by Giolito. Of course, he wasn't sharp. Uh, you know, there was some rust, but it gets me really excited moving forward. And, you know, I think it's a silver lining uh, for, you know, with, what what the Sox have shown us uh, these last uh, this last week. Um, you know, Vaughn should be playing regularly. Getting consistent playing time due to the Jimenez injury is not what we wanted. Uh, but it's nice to have Vaughn in the lineup. Hopefully he is in the lineup regularly. Uh, good to have Pollock back in the series. I mean, he didn't really do much offensively. Neither did anybody on the Sox. But it's just I, right now it's a matter of leaving the game healthy uh, is a positive. And if he can play in some baseball games where it's cold, the weather is not perfect, uh, testing out that hamstring and things look good, uh, that's a that's a good sign. Uh, Sox are a better team with Pollock in there. Uh, big home run by Danny Mendick. Uh, we thought it was going to be a huge insurance run in the seventh until everything collapsed uh, at the hands of Liam Hendricks. Um, wanted, speaking of base running, and, and it goes on some of the coaches. I talked about Joe McEwing in a previous episode when the Sox were in Cleveland. What was he doing uh, in the third inning? Uh, bases were loaded. Andrew Vaughn hit a base hit to left, and Joe McEwing sent Abreu from second base. He was tagged out, and he absolutely had no chance. I mean, that, in my mind, is how more injuries are caused. You you know, you got Abreu chugging around third, probably in his head's like, I don't think I've got this. McEwing's trying to make something happen, trying to, you know, make the losing streak disappear with one aggressive send of a Brayu, he could have over, you know, he could have strided too much. He could have popped a hamstring. He could have hurt his ankle, you know, trying to have an aggressive, you know, slide. There's no reason why he should have been sent from second base. I know McEwing's got a history of being aggressive and the Sox have feasted on that uh, before this losing streak. They were aggressive on the base pass, but they're s- smart. And then, you know, there's just careless. And I thought that was a careless send by McEwing. Uh, I'm glad Abreu, you know, is okay. No, no damage was done, but he could have pulled something. It just wasn't necessary. I I know we got to get something going, but that wasn't the way uh, to do it. Want to talk uh, a little bit about, you know, game two of this series. Um, The, the, the ins and outs of the game don't matter as much as the big Jimenez injury. We're going to get to that and talk more about what does this mean long term uh, for Jimenez. Uh, Going to do that in just a moment. With spring in the air, it's a time of renewal and growth personally and professionally. As your small business grows, LinkedIn Jobs is here to make it easier to find the people you want to talk to faster and for free. Create a free po- job post in minutes on LinkedIn Jobs to reach your network and beyond to the world's largest professional network of over 810 million people. Then add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame 
to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring so your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it easy to focus on candidates with just the right skills and experience so you can quickly prioritize who you'd like to interview and hire. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn jobs number one in delivering quality hires versus leading competitors. LinkedIn jobs helps you find the candidates you want to talk to faster. Did you know every week nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn? Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's linkedin.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. Terms and conditions apply. Thank you for making Locked On White Sox your first listen. For your next listen, check out the Locked On Now podcast. Recaps of MLB games with analysis from our local experts. Taking fans through the season like no other network. Free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Oh man, game two of the Minnesota series. Sox lost 9-2. to two. Uh, It was a no good, very bad game from the beginning. Velasquez loaded up the bases in the first. Uh, It was another maddening game where the Sox had seven hits and scored only two runs. Uh, Velasquez went three and a third innings, eight hits, five earned runs, a walk, six strikeouts, two home runs. I don't know. I don't know about you. I just don't think Velasquez is going to be around in June. Um, you know, he had that home opener, uh, which he, he gave you four innings of a pretty good baseball and, uh, it has not been good since Sousa, Crick, Severino and Hendricks got in game two. It was the first time Hendricks had pitched in six days. That's the other issue with these lopsided, uh, games and the Sox, you know, losing, um, you know, there, there isn't a lead to be held on to. So Hendricks, uh, there's no need for Hendricks to come in. I mean, that's his specialty sitting around for six days. I can't imagine. I don't know if that played into, you know, Sunday. I think it was just a matter of a lot of pitches and I think just a bad game plan with Buxton. Anyway, the big story in game two, um, was the Aloy Jimenez injury suffers a hamstring injury, trying to leg out an infield hit. This is what the white Sox have to say about it. He was placed on the 10-day IL prior to Sunday's game with a hamstring strain. The White Sox are waiting to put a plan in place until further evaluation by White Sox team physicians at Rush University System for Health. Maybe there's an update before Tuesday's game. Uh, The estimation is that Aloy will miss approximately six to eight weeks. Um, TLR spoke and it was written about Uh, after Saturday's game about Jimenez in in tears, uh, the players in tears after the game on Saturday. Uh, Jimenez was not, you know, he wasn't hitting the cover off the ball, nor was he flashing any gold glove caliber defense in left field. But there is no question, you know, the White Sox are a more fearsome team with Jimenez in that lineup. And the sad thing is, you know, I don't think we have even, we don't even have an idea yet of what we have in Aloy Jimenez. I mean, we don't even know his ceiling. Uh, We've been trying to know that, but these injuries keep derailing things. Uh, In four years, Jimenez has played in 243 games, 930 at bats. And, uh, and, you know, that's what's sad. Where do you go from here? Um, A lot of Sox fans, uh, you know, here Monday morning, but this has been happening for the last couple weeks as all these injuries. I mean, going back to the Mankata, Lance Lynn, it's the coulda, woulda, shoulda, the, the potential, the expectations. Um, we as Sox fans, I think it hurts so much because we have serious expectations of, for this team. Uh, 2017, 2018, 2019, uh, we're not there yet. 2020 was such a goofy year for a lot of different reasons. Um, Last year, serious expectations. This year, absolute serious expectations. And uh, from, you know, how the free agency was handled to, you know, this the start of spring training with injuries to this this month 
of bad baseball, that's what it hurts. And these injuries, I don't have an answer. I, I don't know. Why are these injuries happening? Lack of flexibility? Is there not stretching? Is there not enough stretching? Uh, is it a strength and conditioning thing? Um, is it a shortened spring training? I personally don't believe it's necessarily that. What are these players doing during the offseason? Okay. This is a 365 sport. Are they trying to do too much? You know, is Jimenez a guy that should really be trying to leg out an infield hit? I mean, is there a way to tell him to, to tone it down? It sounds like that was the message in left field. Like, don't go for everything. Don't sacrifice your body. Don't be a hero out there. Just do enough. Well, you know, we're not, we, we don't have Jimenez to be legging out infield hits. You know, he's, he's a masher. We need his power. You know, trying to leg out a hit, it looks like he extended, foot hit the bag incorrectly. You know, it, we're at a point right now, and I don't know if you f folks feel this, you know, that you're listening and, you know, anytime there's a ball that's hit on the ground or anytime uh, an outfielder's tracking down a, a fly ball or it, you're holding your breath. Is a guy going to collapse on the field at any moment, you know, holding the back of their leg uh, because there's a hamstring issue? It's it, it's it's just confusing. Uh, and being robbed of Aloy's joy, you know, his love for baseball and, and of course, the potentials I just talked about. This team has got to feel it. And, and it's a matter of how you mentally get past these injuries, this bad baseball, these hurdles. And you know, get back to work. Uh, you know, how do you stay united as a team? Uh, is TLR, you know, having having meetings? Are players having closed door meetings at this point? Um, what's Larusa's role? Uh, is it Abreu? Is it on TA? There are some. There are a, there's a lot of talent on this team, and it is just April. But I, again, I'm not subscribing to. It's just April. These things are going to write themselves. You know, T.A. having six errors last week uh, in Cleveland heading into Minnesota, that's, that's not an April thing, okay? He's not a rookie. He's been around since 2016. Uh, yeah, some of these guys are going to come around with their offensive numbers. Yaz, Abreu, you know, the old, uh, you know, with Abreu it's when the weather warms up. But there's other fundamentals going on. Uh, there's some bullpen stuff that's going on. Um that, yeah, there is a ton of talent. Yes, they can bounce back. Absolutely. There's tons of baseball left, but a lot of things have to be fixed up. And sure, we need to get healthy. Okay, and hope hopefully that happens on Tuesday when Kansas City comes to town. There, there are silver linings, folks. And I'm going to tell you why Michael Kopech brings so much hope to this White Sox organization right now and to fans. We're going to get to that um, just after this. This is the time of year when most people have given up on their New Year's resolutions, but hey, not me. I'm sticking to my resolution of eating right thanks to Built Bar. Have you tried the puffs? If you haven't, you're missing out on one of Built Bar's best tasting bars. Puffs are the first ever protein infused marshmallow. They're fluffy, they're marshmallowy, they're not just a protein bar. All Built Bars are covered in 100% real chocolate. Yes, puffs included. 100% real chocolate, low calorie, high protein. Replace your candy bars with these. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from two to 300 calories. Go to built.com. You'll be blown away. High protein, low cal, high fiber, low carb. Most built bars contain 130 calories, four grams of sugar, four net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a candy bar, which usually has around 240 calories. 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. At Built Bar, they're all about the taste. They make it taste delicious first, then figure out how to make it healthy. Go to Built.com, use promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. Use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at Built.com. So game one uh, versus the Twins this past Friday, uh, Sox lost that one two to one. A, an absolute heartbreaker. Oh, that, that one set the tone of the weekend, unfortunately. Sox gave up two runs in the eighth uh, on two throwing errors. Uh, it looked like a Little League game there in the eighth. Uh, but that's how things have gone uh, for our White Sox. 
Uh, offense has not been uh, – there's been nothing to speak of. So pitching and defense, you know, they it has to be rock solid. And it really hasn't on the defensive front. Um, I The bullpen has been falling apart lately, uh, but a bright spot has been Michael Kopech. Uh, he was on the hill on Friday, and uh, he's had three starts now, and they have been very impressive. Kopech went five innings, gave you gave up three hits, zero earned runs, one walk, seven strikeouts. He threw 83 pitches. There was a wonderful article uh, in the Chicago Tribune uh, yesterday on Sunday by Lamont Pope, uh, the White Sox beat reporter. And uh, it, it really got me even more excited for uh, Michael Kopech. Um, I'm going to read you some some quotes that I just thought were were, were great. Uh, this is Kopech speaking about Friday. I had better command of my pitches, Kopech said. I was able to feel myself in my body a little bit better than I had my first two starts. I definitely definitely felt more comfortable out there. Obviously, the goal is to go out there from the first pitch on and ride that wave, Kopech said. Sometimes that's baseball and you've got to go, you've got to see how everything's going before you settle in. I settled in a lot quicker than I had in my first two starts. I was excited about that. Uh, Kopech went on to give a ton of credit to Reese McGuire, who was catching him on Friday. This was Kopech talking about uh, McGuire. Reese has caught all three of mine now, and he's been able to see what's working and what's not out of the gate. The slider being a pitch that I usually heavily lean on, it hasn't really been there the past two, so we've gone to breaking ball, or when we've seen myself getting away with fastballs more often than not, we can lean on that. We did that a little bit on Friday. The adjustments are kind of a partnership deal where if he sees something, we're going to go with that. If I'm not comfortable with it, then I'm going to throw what I'm comfortable with. It was good on Friday. Kopech lowered his ERA to 0.64. He ranks second in the American League in that category. Uh, Kopech has 15 strikeouts in 14 innings. Uh, it, he has been a joy to watch. He is somebody we as Sox fans have been waiting for since uh, the off season of 2016. I, again, I, I've mentioned it in previous episodes. I still don't think we even have an idea of what the ceiling is on Kopech. Uh, but these three starts, what we saw from Giolito on Sunday, still loving what I'm seeing from Cease. Hey, we've got three lively, exciting arms in the starting rotation. Uh, hopefully we can get back, you know, Lynn. But, you know, nothing is promised. And I, and I think that's what really, it really stings. Nothing is owed. Um, I know that I felt, you know, watching some very directionless White Sox baseball for a while, and then some very bad baseball in 2017, 18, 19, you know, due to the rebuild. Watching the Sox acquire a ton of controllable talent while tearing things down and seeing things begin to galvanize in 2020, I definitely felt, you know, like it was our time uh, we finally arrived. I'm sure you felt that way too as a Sox fan. Sadly, you know, it just doesn't always work out like that. A rebuild doesn't equate, you know, to a World Series. There are no guarantees. Uh, that That's, you know, that's what stung last year. And, and I really... You know, I hope that the White Sox are not an example of how a rebuild could go wrong. There is still a massive amount of talent on this White Sox team. They are underperforming for a variety of confusing reasons. They are getting hurt. Uh, it's frustrating, uh, but it's late April. You know, uh, hopefully, you know, it's time to figure some things out. There is still a ton of baseball. You know, hopefully we get Lynn back. Hopefully Aloy is not gone for as long as we anticipate uh, definitely not more and that Robert is going to be okay. Uh, Monday is an off day. And then tomorrow, Hey, the Sox get right back on track against the Kansas city Royals. Really appreciate you listening to the podcast. Uh, you can find this podcast absolutely everywhere. Uh, we're on Twitter and Instagram at locked on socks. You can find me on Twitter at Nick underscore GG. Uh, TB, appreciate you making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. Now make your second listen, Lockdown MLB. Paul Francis Sullivan, just call him Sully, brings you his unique perspective on the major league's past and present 
It's free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Uh, coming up on the next episode, hopefully we have more info on the extent of the Jimenez injury, and we'll get you ready for the Kansas City Royals uh, series. Thanks for making Lockdown White Sox your first listen. I'm Nick Murawski, and until next time, go Sox!